<laughs> Welcome to Little Creek Bee Ranch. Yo, what's up? Getting the camera settled. Let's do date and time, eh? May 11th, 2023, 1.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. A little humid, not terrible. Temperature's about 71, something. And we're back here in the uh, catch box nursery. And if you've been following along and watching us and all the stuff that we do. I'm settled here. And issues. So we have uh, in the back of our property what we call a catch box nursery. Whole apiary. About two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten catch boxes right now. And we'll be doing some more. We'll be doing more. Putting some more out. And the weather conditions have improved as far as wetness and stretching out the rain fronts and it's just like perfect so the swarms are moving good and the nectar's rolling hard and the box that you see on the right i think we have a swarm inside as a matter of fact two of them i believe so we'll do some lessons Just kind of laid back, not intense. A bee's returning. As you can see that bee returning. Hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and lessons. I don't want to open them. I want to leave them undisturbed. They hadn't been there, but maybe a week. So I'm going to. Widen the angle and show you what I do. I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, more bees on a box to my left. We may have several swarms. Don't know. See, I was down here yesterday and noticed a couple of them, so I'm excited. I'm thinking. That's why I'm pausing. I'm thinking. Okay. So, watch this. I want to stand to the side where I can see them. They're out in the field, but I want to see pollen come in. <coughs> little, these little tips, these little tips will help you. You don't have to freak out and work so darn hard with bees. If you're not careful, the bees will work you to a frazzle. So when we get a field worker return, usually this is what we say, 1.30. This is about dance time, 1 to 2. Must be lots of field action in the field. It's good to have a chair, you know. Just have a folding chair. Here we go. Two. Mm. A little nervous. Checking each other out. A guard bee. Okay. There was a guard bee there that jumped out to check somebody coming in. So that's a defensive action. That tells me we're watching over something inside. Looking for pollen, but attitude is important too. Oh, well, why don't you just open them? Oh, here comes one. Well, you can, you know, but I want to do this assessment without disturbing, right? Okay, so why is that so important? Too many times young beekeepers, they get so excited, the emotions, and to, to rip off the lid, I'm going to see inside. Here she comes out. Well, they're not committed to the box. What makes you think they're committed? See, I'm just standing here. 
they can leave. Well, I've had them leave before when I was new and young and stupid and didn't know what I was doing. Open them up in the next two or three days and come out the next day they're gone. Like, what the heck? Well, you have to understand how they work, right? Returning. If they're returning without pollen, they're returning with nectar. So why not open right now? The bees have a s s very strict sense of priority. B brood sensitive first, then queen sensitive, then honey sensitive. In that order, it's a principle, it won't change. So if I let them just chill out and slow down, it takes 21 days to hatch a worker. That's a cycle, hatch cycle. 21 days, three weeks. If I give them a couple of weeks, that means they're gonna have a lot of larva. Oh, coming in. A lot of larva and eggs built up. That means they're gonna be committed. Now they got brood to commit to. Now they're committed to the house. So I like to give them two or three weeks before I open them. Then, then absconding is less of an issue. They're returning nicely, but they're not coming back with pollen. Tells me they're finding nectar. Some bees have a preference. They love to go get pollen. Some bees love to go get nectar. And I'm looking down the line to my left, there's another one down there. So your assessment skills, real important. Slow down, slow down. I'm gonna refresh a couple of these with Swarm Commander. Okay, so what else am I looking on the porch? There's only been several come and go, right? So it's not like super busy. But I can still tell enough by the attitude. It's, it's just an attitude. So, so I've always told my students and stuff, hey, look, you need to be a, a student of the porch. And what's that mean? Get a lawn chair. I'm looking down this way at the end and there I think there's another swarm down there, cool. Get a lawn chair. And as long as you're not messing with them, you, you wouldn't even have to have a jacket on. Sit here about three feet away from them and watch the porch. Off to the side. Don't get out in front. I'm off to the side. These are dark chocolate. These are dark bees. That's, that can be some Russians. That's good too, man. Darker, darker colors. Oh, man. I get, I, even I get excited. Inside, I'm like a little eight-year-old boy. I can't wait to open this present up. <laughs> no, you can't do that. But, but to be a student of the porch, so what else am I looking for? How they enter, how they enter, like with a purpose. And I can see some guard bees standing at the opening. They're like, they're like guarding, they're, they have a purpose. So I would say this one This one has a colony in it. I haven't seen pollen come back yet. I would like to see pollen. So there's a bee, she's coming out. Now she's looking at her front porch. Uh, off she goes. She's memorizing that sweeping back and forth. She's memorizing, here we go, sweep back and forth. Oh. Yeah, there's a colony in there. You'll learn a lot if you just slow down, be a student of the porch. And watch. I've always referenced a little booklet you can get on Amazon called At the Hive Entrance. I think it's seven or eight bucks. It's pretty cheap. Very good. Required reading for a new, new beekeeper. At the Hive Entrance. It shows an old man in a chair. He's just sitting down right in front of the hive, just looking at the hive. And learn, it describes for you, it goes in a series, a litany of characteristics of the front of the porch. 
and it tells you in description you know, what, what the beasts are doing outside on the porch, what they're doing outside is, is a reflection of what's going on inside. Ha 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 ha. Very slick. Very cool booklet at the hive entrance. Amazon. Come on, girls, I want to see some pollen. It's kind of quiet. Okay. <laughs> At the hive entrance. All right, so let's do this. I want to do some swarm, Commander. Hold on here. <laughs> Get myself. There we go. Pull you back out. All right, so what are we using? Now, this is this little lesson is directed at new, younger beekeepers. Here is our bee lure, swarm commander. Comes in a two ounce bottle, about $38, liquid gold, baby. It's the smell of Nazanoff pheromone in the back of the bee. There's another bee going in. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm looking the hive next to the one I was looking at. So Nazanoff is, it comes from the very back end of the bee, the top part of the abdomen, the very back, they'll roll out a little white gland called the Nazanoff gland and emit a pheromone. It's a come here pheromone. Come here, stay here. A come here pheromone. So I could take, I could take Swarm Commander and I could go to a tree limb, a, pr a particular tree limb, wherever, you know, over here, whatever a forked tree limb or something and spray some on a cotton ball that's a target you can create targets where you want swarms to come to or on the bottom of a cyan <laughs> and they're targets so i'm just going to go out here to the right and freshen up these two out here we're focused we're focused on these here in the front <laughs> Get that going. Two squirts. Two squirts. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes. These are lessons, man. Golden nuggets, man. Pick up all the golden nuggets. I'll face over this way. Sometimes things start off real slow, like three, four weeks of nothing. And that's kind of what it's been. You can't give up. You can't freak out. This is like catfishing. So if you and I went to Big River and we put one big long trot line across the river and we put one hook on it with no perch meat we're not catching any cats highly doubtful but if we put a big old long trot line and 200 hooks with perch meat on it whoo -hoo, the next morning we're pulling in some flatheads channels and blues buddy it's the same principle but we got to wait so i have eight down here i'd like to have more than eight it's easy enough to do it's just been busy this busy 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 Okay, that's warm. Like, what is going on? See, I hadn't been down here since yesterday. So over here, this one right here, they're going in and out there. There's another one going in. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Focus on these two. There's some swarm commander here. Da 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 da. -da. Two times in the past, I've gotten too impatient, and after three or four days, open up and go, cool, have a swarm. Come out next week and they're gone. Dang it, what the heck? Yeah, see there? There's a principle of privacy. 
We're private, dude. Don't be jacking with us. We're private. Okay. All right. <laughs> We're private. Don't be messing with us. So that's a one surefire way how to screw up your catch box program. That's an important golden nugget. Another important golden nugget is on the ground. Boy, this is a big one. If you follow us, you understand. You, you know, you've heard me say this. But if you stumbled across us and you're kind of new, uh -huh, okay. Most times, beekeepers have put their catch boxes up in the air, like 20 feet in a tree. <laughs> like that has to be done. No, it does not. Why are they doing this? It's tradition. They get all traditional. Well, I gotta work hard. I gotta work harder for them. <laughs> Why? Well, that's what Joe said at the bee club. I gotta get them up 20 feet in the tree. Why? I don't know. See? All right. Let's see if we can watch. If we can watch. Come on, again. I want to watch. On the ground. If we can't catch bees on the ground in boxes just like this, there you go. How is it we're able to manage them on the same kind of beams on an ongoing basis? Right? I mean, why can't we make that connection? Don't know. Tradition's really deep. Those paradigms. Yeah, baby. Yeah, she like going in. Where's she going in? See, she's trying to determine which side she wants to go in. Paradigms. Those paradigms become hobbles, like hobbles on a horse. And they can really give you troubles in beekeeping. So I'm anti-traditional, I'm contrary, I'm rogue. <laughs> I've been called the rogue. He's the rogue beekeeper. <laughs> no, I just think differently, that's all. I love this. Now how come, oh, they're coming out of the left one over there. Oh man, how come, the, how come all the nukes? Well, I, I'm 61 and I work by myself a lot. And the big ones like double deeps, those are good setups. Double deeps are good setups for catch boxes, don't get me wrong. They're just hard and awkward for me to, to handle. They're big and heavy. You know, once I get them set up, yes, double deeps or a deep and a medium, that's a good combination. But I like, for catch boxes, I like nukes, five frame nuke, this is what you're looking at, or Five frame mediums, two of them together. Five frame mediums, two of them together. Or double medium, full size. I like that combination. I can pick them up. I can strap them and pick them up and move them. Because these, these, some, some of these will stay down here, some won't. We'll move them around. There you go. On the porch, baby. Yeah. The two hurdles, the, two, the hurdles that I see um, beekeepers bump into is um, setting catch boxes on the ground. That's just like, for some reason, that's just a giant disbelief. <laughs> that's why I filmed down here so much to show you. We'll do more filming, you know, as long as the weather doesn't go to 105 and stay there, we'll do good. I'm looking to my right over here and there's a colony and one over here in the right. That's a hurdle for them to get over. You, 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 you mean you can catch them on the ground? <laughs> but Joe at the bee club, he said, I, ha I have to get on a ladder and hoist them up to 50 feet. <laughs> You'll catch them up there, but I'm not falling and breaking a hip for bugs. Sorry, I'm not doing all that work. Look, I'm, I'm sitting right here. I know I've got two. I have more two possibly three swarms just in the past week boom 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 and that's 
how it seems to work in a wave. It'll go quiet. It'll go quiet for a while. And I see to the left of me, a scout bee is checking a box out. On the side, scout bees. Scout bees analyze all four sides. The bees that you're looking at, they're only paying attention to the porch. They're only interested in the porch. You don't, they're not analyzing the other three sides. Scout bees, like to my left, she's, she's going to the back and to the front. Let's see if I can, all right, let's see if I can do this. Watch this scout bee. See if we can get this. Come on, Kendall. See if we can get this. Well, I can't. It's <laughs> squeaky. Okay, let's see if we can watch her. She was on the back. Looking underneath. Mm, nope. Did she go away? Okay. Good stuff, man. These are good. These are good lessons. You can do lots of good lessons without getting into bees, but we'll we'll open up soon enough. <coughs> nope, she's gone. Go tell her sisters. Hey, I found something pretty cool, man. Go tell her sisters. Okay, so let's come back here. Ooh. Darn it. Come on. Come on. That's what I'm interested in. That porch action. Looks like the hole in the front is is sealed up. What? I didn't do that. They, they might have done that. Don't know. Or maybe I missed it. It's okay. It seems like there's a couple of guard bees hanging out on the porch here. They come in and out. They, they, uh, they're hanging out on the stoop. The stoop, like that area between the inside and the outside. Okay. Somebody's going in. See, hanging on the inside edge. Right there she is. Guard bees typically will, they march. Okay, see they're on that inside edge. Two or three of them. Yep, calling you in there. But I love, I love the body language. God, I just can't stress to you enough the time that you take intentionally, on purpose, to get a lawn chair and sit off to the side. Like I, I know I'm out front filming, but sit off to the side, nine o'clock or three o'clock, and try to guess what they're doing. It, it doesn't take long, you'll get good at it. They're gonna guard the entrance. They're gonna smell each other when, it, when, when they try to come in. For, now other bees, now understand they're not like geese, they're not monogamous. Other bees that maybe not have a colony or a weak home, they will uh, buy their way in, bring up some nectar, give them a taste of it. Oh yeah, you can come on in, you got some good stuff. So you're in the club. You bring some toys and fun stuff, man, you, you're in the club. So they buy their way in. Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, I got, we got action, man. Okay, let me uh, move you again. I'm gonna slide you. That one there, it been coming in and out of there. But that attitude has been more like curiosity attitude, not ownership attitude.
Uh huh. Very cool. Love it. And what's wrong? So I have eight nuke boxes, small sets. So what's wrong with doing 20 small sets? Nothing. Width. That's the key. Width. Go wide, young man. Go wide. <laughs> wide. Wide. Moving to the right. Let's look at these two sets. <laughs> All right. Woohoo. Back you out. Mm -hmm. These are double five frame mediums. Pretty cool here. Like this kind of setup. Why? I have lots of flexibility here. Now on the market, I guess you could probably get, oh, to the left there, that bee just came out there. That's interesting. It's the one on the right that I was paying attention to. Anyway, you may be able to get onto Man Lake or Day Dant or around, and you may find five frame medium boxes on the market. And I'm not criticizing it. I'm just saying it's a non-traditional box, five frame medium. So we cut and make our own. Why? because I get a lot of different choices with it. I can run a five frame medium just by itself for an emergency queen set. Like if I need a queen, she's easy to find in that five frame medium. That's easy to find her. I could run double boxes like this. I could leave them like that. I can. And I could put a queen excluder on top and I could just run some honey boxes in there, they'd fill up pretty quick and I'd have some pretty quick honey. As long as most of it's capped over, I could do that. Or I could break that down. Let's say, let's assume that there's a swarm in the right box. I could come in and smoke them, provided they got enough eggs laid down, they're secure and locked down. I could, she, she comes out of there, ooh, I like that. Smoke them, slide them over to the middle, put in a bottom board, put in a new full medium box and move all the frames over to the medium, the full size medium box and add another medium on top of it. And now I have a full size medium set. Nice. Double mediums for brooding and operation are really good. I like that, double mediums. Boy, I've got bees checking. I got bees checking stuff out. They're checking two or three more out over here. Cool. So, so give some thought to what would you do? See now, see, watch your attitude. See, she, she goes right in there. There's another one. Ooh, like it. Like it. Although the boxes, these two sets of boxes are real similar the bricks and brick colors on top are different. The bottom box is screened. It's screened. And the boxes are setting on just a fiberglass sheet just to make it dark. That's why you see that yellow square there. So after a couple of weeks, I'll smoke them and I'll just scoot them over and I'll pull that yellow sheet out put them back in their spot and they'll have ventilation on the bottom. With these smaller sets, I don't really have to do a traditional kind of bottom board. You can, it's just extra equipment. But to get the swarms interested in the set, you're off, it's called your offering, that's the proper term, your offering. To get them interested in the offering, uh, I want it dark. So I set them on just a sheet of fiberglass or board or whatever, it's just I have some old fiberglass to make it dark. Oh, lots of good lessons, man. So when you learn a lot of golden nuggets like this, how the bees act, what they're looking for, the weather, how the weather ties into it. This is great, it's kind of scattered clouds. You got rainstorms coming in every couple of days or three. Temperatures aren't blazing hot, nectar's rolling hard. The swarms are going to be moving hard. That's when you're going to want your catch box. So these catch boxes, I think I set them up late March. April, what is that? Almost, almost a month and a half. Well, okay, can be faster. OK, 
can be slower. Last year we were good until latter part of May and we hit June and went to 102 and didn't look back. It got to 110, 105, it was terrible. Bee season for us was basically done over. Eh, that one, that one kind of bites. That's rare, thank goodness. I hope it doesn't happen again. So I want to encourage you to do, to copy some of these things, go wide. Sometimes people will call me and say, uh, nothing's in my catch box. I say, how many did you set out? Um, two. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 slow odds. This is, this is thin for me, eight. I like to get up to about 10 or 12. Some guys I know do 50, 60. Now watch this, here comes my warning. Boy, they get the hang of this, they go, woohoo, boy, we can suck up the swarms. 50, 60, 70 catch boxes scattered around a couple of counties. And they know they're gonna make big honey off of it. But they also work a job, they got a family, they got 40 other colonies on the ground, and they're sucking up major time swarms. And when it comes fall time and winter time, what do you think happens with a lot of those colonies? They, they can't keep up with them and they end up dying. That's okay, we, we, want, we wanted to make the honey off of them. Ooh. It's called burning through bees. No, nope, sorry. Nope, not going there. This system, this strategy is meant for you to be able to accumulate some colonies so that you can manage and run on a small apiary scale. And the beauty of this is when you're done, like, okay, I've got my five or six colonies, bust the boxes down and bring them in. It's like a switch. Turn it on, turn it off. I'll run these out here till September time, unless we go bone killing dry. But to, to run 60, 70 catch boxes just for the sake of all the honey and not care for the bees and let them just perish. No, 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 no. But majority, 98% of the people are trying to find bees, trying to get bees. They don't completely understand how to do it. The thinking, the strategy, that's why we teach so much. It's not fast. You gotta go wide and you gotta speak in, in terms of the bees know. They, know. they know pheromone communication and vibrations. Well, I'm not gonna go out there and vibrate <laughs> for them. I'm gonna use pheromones and that's what you see here. <laughs> cool. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Now I'm going to spray Swarm Commander on the left one because I don't think I have a colony in there. Oops. Okay, let me get myself settle here. Now we'll probably have swarm, swarm storms late tonight and <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> find a chest cold. Storms late tonight, we'll wash some of that away. That's all right. As a, as a low front passes through, I will come back out and refresh them. So think about double mediums. <laughs> cool, all right, moving yet, here we go. Let's go over here. Uh, yeah. Woo, come on. Same scenario here. Two sets of double mediums. The bees have been looking at the one on the right. I don't think there's a swarm in there though. Put 
think of a good lesson. It's great stuff, man. Any, anytime you watch our videos, I, I always purpose to give golden nuggets, key tips, key strategies. I'd be writing them down. I would suggest having a strategy book, you know, that you could write bullet points down as you watch our videos and you go back and rerun them, you know, watch them again and again. Oh, he said this, man. And start thinking in, ter in terms of strategy Scouts have been looking at him. Now, all right, let's do another little strategy tip. Turn it up here, hang tough with me. Okay, zoom me out. Hard to see me, okay. Get a feel for what the property looks like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin you 360, all right? See, if, you're, if you've been following us, you know the past year, the, the last years have been really tall and ugly. Well, we tightened her up and cleaned her up. Look at the tree line, fence line, bushes, <laughs> trees, cedar tree, more trees, more limbs, more bushes, more trees even way out there. Now, what's the deal? <coughs> Swarms have a tendency to come hang up. Say, what? Here this guy goes again. <laughs> they, they, they don't always come right in. They're coming in well, they go to a bush or a limb or a tree line or honeysuckle or cedar. They love cedar trees. They get on cedar, it's like Velcro, like crazy. They just love sticking to cedar. Uh, they're thinking on picking a box. They haven't decided. <coughs> Cough drop. They are picking, they are making a decision. So when you are in your apiary or catch box apiary, wherever, <clears throat> have a walk around. Think Easter eggs. <clears throat> You're looking for Easter eggs. Okay. <coughs> and Sorry. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. Come on, cough drop. Easter eggs. They'll be hiding. They love to hide. Let's go on down here. They love to hide behind, down low, up high. They love to hide. Mm-hmm. All right, over here we go. The scout's checking them out. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Very good. Sorry. Let's see if we see a scout. They like to hide. Normally, they'll be six feet and lower, eight, eight feet and lower for sure. If you find a swarm that's 20 foot up, that's a virgin queen. She's light. 
she hasn't been bred yet so she's not heavy so she's light and fast zip well if they're that high I just salute them and give them to mother nature but most of the swarms coming into you are already bred queens and they'll be low I've, I've seen them on the ground actually on the ground a foot off the ground two feet off the ground queen's tired she hadn't flown a lot she can't go very far high What's my opinion here? We've picked up a lot of interest. Lots of scout bees checking out other vacancies, vacant offerings. I need to uh, bring down a couple of more sets or three. There's a scout bee. See how she's on the sides? She's on the bottom. On the side. Mm-hmm. Eighteen, nineteen years of doing this, and I've yet to see a colony come zipping in when I've been out here. That would be phenomenal. Some people get to see that. I've not yet seen that. Seen them leave. <laughs> Drummed them down drumming see more scout bees on boxes to my left drumming a metal a metal bowl like a big salad bowl stainless steel bowl and a wooden spoon or a steel spoon's best and you have a parabola in your hands and you point that parabola at the swarm in the air and give the bottom of that bowl a, a steady wrap you know thump 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 and that co that colony of swarm in the air will gather up around the queen and come right down <sighs> true done it five six times it's not a old folks tale that's a true thing it's called drumming but the bees have to be in the air and sometimes I've had students with me here and they don't know what to expect <coughs> <clears throat> they'll see me grab my smoker and my frame grips and, and go to clank and, and they'll think he's lost his mind man <laughs> nope it's called drumming and I'm not going to let a thousand dollar bill fly away to me any swarm is a thousand dollar bill mm. yep, kind of important I like what I'm seeing. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna spin you around over here. Golly, Kendall, come on, come on, come on, come on. See this? See this box? Oh, right here. The one closest to you. Ah. There's like, I can't do it too close or I'll spook them off. The bottom of the box. Bottom. Hope you can see them. Well, that's as close as I can get. It looks like I'm right up on them. I'm 15 feet away. They're inspecting the sides in the back. Those boxes you're looking at, the back bottom has a screen under it for ventilation. And they're smelling and looking through that screen. They're, they're inspecting. Those are scout bees. Good deal. Well, I'm confident in saying I have two. I will say that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Inspecting that one. 
it's pretty quick pretty quick inspections and they'll go back to their sisters and say hey check this out now you got to remember something you're competing you're competing with the other home opportunities that they're looking at it could be an old house it could be a barn it could be a bucket it could be an old truck an old tree so you really want to up your game you really want to do a good job clean equipment some good frames we don't want frames that have a bunch of webs and garbage on them fresh foundation if you can good old comb if you can it needs to be sprayed with zentari we have lessons on zentari to keep the wax moss at bay it reduces all the wax moth or of a buildup. More scout bees on that one. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Student of the apiary. <coughs> You get your lawn chair. I may do this sometime. I just usually come stand out here. It's so peaceful and so relaxing that you can, maybe you get a swivel chair, I don't know. Or you can just pick your chair up and turn it. You're gonna watch a section of the apiary. See who's, who's coming in to inspect. Which boxes will they pick next? Like this one that you're looking at here. That could very well be the next one. There's lots of action. So what happens is you'll see more and more scout bees come and check this box out over a couple of days, whatever. And then normally it kind of goes quiet and, and then all of a sudden you'll come back a couple of days later and boom, they have come in. So the scout bees come in onesies and twosies. They go back and get their sisters and then it's eight, then it's 12, then it's 20. You go, holy cow. As long as, see, I'm not walking up, I'm 15, 20 feet away, I'm okay. And boy, if I went up there right now, I'd spook them off, and I don't want to do that. You'll, you'll get the feel of this. This is very much a repetitive thing, repetition. So anything that's repetition, you can, you can pick up signals, little habits, rhythms, a rhythm. So that box has a decal on the back of it. <laughs> mm. Okay, so I have number 21 stuck on the back of it. <sighs> yep. The number of scout bees will increase. Typically, we'll go quiet for a day or so, and then here comes the swarm. So I guess if you wanted, you could probably time it to where if you had the time to sit out here for most of a day, just to catch a swarm come in, you know, sit off at a distance 40 yards. And your mission, your objective is to catch, to watch them come into a box. <laughs> yep, that would be just pretty cool. Pretty cool. Very flattering. It always humbles me, man. It's a gift. We got no control here, none, zero. Very flattered. They pick our equipment. <coughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to spin you around. I got action behind me. Ooh, boy, that's a big, fast spin. Holy cow, man. Holy moly, Aunt Jemima. All right. Box on the right. They're looking at the front. They've been on the back. Boy, 
checking one out behind me. Well, I've got quite a few. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Whew, boy. Okay. Here's some more tips and golden nuggets. Swarms are issued from healthy colonies. Only healthy colonies will issue out a swarm. So that's a good thing. These are mostly nurse bees that come with a swarm. There's some workers, but mostly nurse bees. Most of the workers have stayed with a parent house. Some nurse bees stay at the parent house. It's not an even division. Now, how do I know that? Because nurse bees are gorged up in their wax glands and their hyperpharyngeal glands in their head for royal jelly. So since we have lots of nurse bees gorged up in the wax glands, they can throw down wax really fast. This is why they can build so much so fast. Uh, the older workers, mature workers, have already imprinted on the parent, their parent house. So they have a strong commitment to that house. Again, it's not an even split, it's just a majority. It's the majority of the bees in a swarm are nurse bees or house bees. <clears throat> oh man, I love teaching people. A lot of paradigms, I'll, I'll bring down a lot of paradigms. <laughs> Okay, man, how flexible are you? It's not me, it's the bees. The bees are going to bring a really high bar. It's that bar that really separates the beekeepers. They just can't stand it. They're too frustrated. They give up after a couple of years. Like, oh, you got to be kidding. Five, five years. What? <laughs> it's not me, man. You're going to have to go through five solid seasons of seeing all these things before you really think you're going to begin. And even at that, four colonies minimum. Four. You have you not. We don't consider a person starting until they four colonies, four colonies on deck. Say, well, what? That's stupid. <laughs> I've heard it all, man. Look, two doesn't work. Three doesn't work very well, and one for sure is is not going to work. Bees are smart, but they're stupid. They're strong, but they're weak. They get sick. They die. They leave. They abscond. You're back to zero. So four is a beginning point. That's when you can begin. But you gotta stick around long enough in beekeeping to get all the experience, five years. After you've gone through five full seasons, you've seen quite a bit. I certainly don't know it all. Know a lot, don't know it all. 18 years of this, yeah, I feel like I'm beginning. Like what? <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is beekeeping, man. This is unlike anything you've ever done before. The bees are highly intelligent, super smart. All right, let's change it up. What I got here, I'm gonna take you around to the other ones to the front here. Mm-hmm. Action over here. Yeah. No, oh, to the left. On the left. Looks like a scout, a couple of scouts. Scouting on the left. Uh huh. Good deal. Man. Okay. So I, I hope I've piqued your interest. Strategies. A system. The Little Creek Bee Ranch methodology. Do you know bees don't know state lines or county borders? Thank goodness. That allows us to teach members and students in all different states. Connecticut. Arkansas, Missouri, Texas, South Carolina. Shout out to Judy in South Carolina. 
Awesome, she's hungry to learn. Talks to me all the time. That's great, you know? Makes me a better beekeeper. So if you'd like to learn from us, I'd suggest you look at the personal advisor program. You go to littlecreekbeeranch.com, look at the personal advisor program, a structured program, lasts about five to eight years. It's a subscription service, $29.95 a month. Yeah, you can end it when you want. I recommend you stay five to eight years. There's too much to learn. There's a lot to learn. Read the bullet points there. What all you get in the program. Structured newsletter with tips and strategies, conference call at the end of the month, one-on-one -on -one phone appointments, free Zoom classes. Uh -huh. And we loaded it with value on purpose. We want people to join the program, but not everybody will follow what we do. So we have a nominal charge. Let's see if you're willing to invest in your knowledge and your skills in beekeeping. That gives you a committed coach, and that's key. The learning curve in beekeeping is a monster. It will eat you up. And it's very frustrating spending time, money, effort, sweat equity, and only to come up with nothing after three years. And then all that equipment goes on a Craigslist and people are out. Mm, so there is a high attrition and turnover in beekeeping. I don't want that. So to address the learning curve, we created a coaching program. And when you call a guy like me, I'm the only one that works with the students and members. Texting, phone calls, or appointments, however you want to do it. I don't call you and hound you. I just tell you, say, look, this is your rhythm. What rhythm do you want to learn at? Throw your questions at me, I'll, I will knock them down. And once you get questions answered and going further, all of a sudden that learning curve is not quite a monster that we thought. The learning curve comes down and the BIQ goes up. That is a key. That's a key to learning all this. The protocols in beekeeping. What to do, when to do, how to do. What am I looking for? What, do, <laughs> what am I doing? I know, I know. That's for the beekeepers, protocols. The bees, you gotta study the principles. Scout bee on the left. Principles of beekeeping, principles. What is, what is that? Uh, here's uh, several of them. Bees prefer sugar water over nectar. Principle. They didn't ask you. They didn't ask me. <laughs> Bees prefer nectar over sugar water. So if they're not taking down the sugar water at a pretty good clip, they're into big nectar. They know it's there. They'll get to it. I got scout bees everywhere, man. It's cool. Another one. Here's another bee principle. Queens prefer the dark. Man, when you're working with a swarm or queen, it's, that, that queen hits the top of the frames, boom, down she goes, right to the dark. She won't leave a tree, she won't come out of a tree. The queens love the dark. They didn't ask you, it's a principle. Mm-hmm. There's another one, it takes five weeks to raise a good queen. 16 days to hatch, 10 days to fly and mate several times, and about 10 days to roll around and lay. Five weeks is five weeks is five weeks, it's not gonna change. Some of them are faster, some of them are a little slower, but most times, more times than not, it's five weeks. Principle. We've even written a, a B, B Principles ebook, a B Principles handbook, $40, and there's a whole list, of about 45 or 50 principles in there. Once you learn this kind of stuff, now you're not fighting with the bees. You, you, you're understanding what they're doing, what they're doing. Yeah, cool. Free Zoom classes if you, if you plug in the program. I think there's uh, 12 now, 12 of them. If street students come in and street and people wanna buy Zoom classes and not in the program, I think they're $50 a piece. But they're meaty, they got good content in them. That's justified, you know. Ebooks are always $40 a piece. What some of the members have done is take the, the ebooks and print them out, PDF. They're in PDF form and they have my permission to print them for their own use, not to sell. And they'll make their own uh, sustainable beekeeping manual. 
very clever. I never mandated they do that. Several of them have shown me their, their books. It's very cool. They tab out key sections and chapters. And I ask them, okay, so they say, why are we doing this? Because I can, I can write notes. I got plenty of room to take notes and highlight, and I can refer back to it. It's oh, very, very good. That, that's your sustainable beekeeping manual. Very clever. We even have a special offer in there for the ebooks, not $110 off. Look, beekeeping is not free. Uh -uh. And if you don't learn right, boy, you're going to spend a ton. That's what we don't want. So a little bit of investment on the front end helps decrease that learning curve. It's so costly on the back end. And then people say to me, well, we're all in this together. I just think this should all be free. You should help everybody is free. So <laughs> and I simply say, I'm a capitalist. I'm not a communist. Thank you. It's real simple, man. Beekeeping is not free. And it's going to be expensive if you don't learn how to do this. What are you seeing? I'm looking at scout bees. I'm looking at two colonies in catch boxes right now. One, two, three, four, five, six boxes are being inspected. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, moving you again. Try to catch the action. Not trying to offend anybody, I'm just telling you how it is. Here we go. Box on the right. There's a guard bee. Guard be on the right. Yeah, cool. Right. Love it. Okay, so here, let me throw you one last curveball. This is great. I should have brought my chair out here and sat down. Wow. Wow, love it. Curveball. Okay, let's say all of these fill up. Oh man, all of them. Oh, that's great. Whew, there's only so many colonies that I can handle. In the past week, we've been catching swarms up front in the north part of the property. So let's see, I think there's uh, seven up in the north and there's two or three down here. Yeah, that's about, that's about it for me. Okay, but maybe they all fill up. Okay, if that's the case, then I'm gonna take a good portion of them maybe five or six, and I'll go ahead and build them out. I'm gonna push them, I'll build them out, and they're gonna fill up two boxes for brood chambers, a queen excluder, and one honey box. And they'll look to be sold in September, October as a full set. Watch this, full set. People do like to buy full sets of bees in fall time, they can take them home, set them down, don't have to worry about them so much, and just, and just get them through the winter time, and then split them out in springtime, they're money ahead. So I would sell a full set for $750, or if you bring me like-kind equipment, un unpainted, assembled like-kind equipment, we'll drop it $200 because the equipment's worth $200, like-kind, exactly what you got, you bring that to me, new, unpainted, <clears throat> drop it to $550. And we sell colonies like this. And usually people say, nope, $750 is good, they write you the check, and off you go. And we plug them, strap them, help them load them in the truck, and off they go. The attraction to the buyer is I get a full-size set of bees in late fall. All I gotta do is bring them home, set them down, open the porch, and they ought to be good to go all the way into next April. If they take care of them, know how to take care of them. No, not so much babysitting. But nukes that are coming into September time, there's not much time to build them out to full, so you really do have to baby them a certain way. And that takes extra effort and knowledge. So there is a really big attraction to the big full hive sets. You can do that. The bees must pay for themselves. The bees must pay for themselves. Ladies gotta pay the rent. So don't be scared to take some of your colonies and just designate them, you know, however you wanna tag them or write on them or put a star on them or whatever. Say these two are gonna be sold off in September. I'm gonna keep them healthy and build them out full Two box brood chamber, queen excluder, one honey box, a shallow or medium on top. 
I like mediums. And that's going to be sold in September. Strategy. See there? Strategy. Bees coming back. Right now, I just need to increase my numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it to a close. Man, you can go back and watch this one. I, I threw out lots of golden nuggets. See how many golden nuggets you can write down. Tips, tricks, strategies. Put them in a notebook. Rewatch the video a couple of times. Skip forward, jump backwards. Catch key points. You can always call me, text me, write me if you're not, you're not clear on something. Uh-huh. Love it. I challenge you to go look at the personal advisor program if you're serious about beekeeping and you want to knock down that learning curve. There it is. There's your answer. Go look at a page on the website, um, Our Uniqueness. Our Uniqueness. Those are some bullet points of things that we're known for nationally. I'm not trying to be popular. Eh, I'm kind of a private guy. I'm not trying to be popular. But it seems like the way we approach this and what we do has drawn a lot, a lot of people. They like how we do what we do for a reason. We don't use traditional pesticides, zero, none, not tolerated, only essential oil strategies. We're big about that. Acoustic beekeeping, we're big about that. Say what? What did he say? <laughs> I know. I know. Acoustic beekeeping. Go look at the acoustic beekeeping page and the sister page to that one is making the connection. Making the connection. Study those two pages carefully. Learn about the APVOX smart monitor. Very cool. Very accurate. Oh, I could keep on going, man. I could keep on going. Got to give another shout out to, to Gerard. Anna's son. Yo, Gerard. You're watching, dude. Keep your sisters in line, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Homeschool kids, love them. Great group, of, great group of kids. All right, so final assessment. I've got two colonies I know for sure in catch boxes. I've got at least six other boxes here that are being, well, that's the rest of them being checked out because there's eight. Two, four, six, eight, no, there's 10. So six being inspected, two are filled. And I bet there'll be new colonies coming in soon. All right. Hope you're learning. You can find us on Facebook under Little Creek Bee Ranch. YouTube under Ken Davis, the beekeeper. Oh, if you plug in the personal advisor program, we also have a private group. Personal advisor private group on Facebook and we teach there as well. Oh, yeah. Loaded with teaching, man. So if you stumbled across this, congratulations, you found something special. Check us out. Got to go. Later.